Now I'm about to tie a pattern that I really love to tie this kind of fly. It's a little bit buggy, a little bit flashy, not at all hard to tie, and it's really just a cool looking pattern. Hello everybody, Matt O'Neill here. Before I get into today's pattern, I want to talk a little bit about the International Fly Tying Symposium was held up in New Jersey this past weekend. I drove up on Saturday, and it was a pretty cool and well done event, and I did get to meet two of my fly tying idols. The first one was Mike Vala. Now we've talked about Mike on this channel before. Not only is he a world-class tire, he's probably the foremost historian of our sport. From his books on the founding flies to the Catskill style flies and bucktails and streamers, not only are his books just great to learn how to tie from, they're really just great reads for any of us who are interested in the history of our sport. And Mike and his wife, Valerie, who took the picture you just saw, were just super nice people. It was really uh, great to meet them. And the next guy I want to mention was none other than Barry Ord Clark, Fly Tire Magazine's 2021 Fly Tire of the Year. Now, if you've been tying flies for any number of years or have been watching YouTube fly tying videos, you probably already know about Barry's channel. And here he is in one of the rare moments when he only had four or five people crowding around his bench trying to talk to him and watch him tie. But I got to spend a few minutes talking with him, and he's just amazing. Super nice guy. Gave me a preview of some of the flies he has coming up. So I'm really looking forward to seeing those. And one of the other cool things about this event was I was recognized by a couple of you folks out there. Bert Brocious from Central Pennsylvania came up to me and said, Hey, aren't you Matt from Savage Flies? And I said, Yes. So Bert, if you're watching this, it was my pleasure talking to you. Thanks for coming up and introducing yourself. And another guy who recognized me was Marvin Cash, who runs a podcast called The Articulate Fly. So if any of you fly fishermen out there also listen to podcasts, definitely check it out. It's really well done and a good one to have on your playlist. Okay, enough about the symposium. Let's talk about today's pattern real quick. A lot of you know the history of the Trude Fly. It was created by Carter Harrison in the early 1900s on a ranch called the A.S. Trude Ranch in Idaho. And it was unique. He used some carpet fibers for a style of wing that eventually became known as a Trude style wing. So this lime green version of it, who knows who created it originally? It's just some other variation of a Trude style fly. But it's a pretty cool pattern. A lot of fun to tie. I think you're gonna like it. Let's give it a shot. So there's one in the vise, a light green trude. Pretty nifty looking pattern, quite simple to tie. Now, sizes for this guy, as big as a 10, small as a 16. I'm gonna go with a 12, 1X long dry fly hook. And the recipe does call for a gray thread. So I'm gonna use a gray, but if you don't have gray, go with brown. Not a big deal, there's not a whole lot of the thread that will be seen. So go ahead and wrap it to the start of the bend. Now the tail on this guy, one of my favorite tailing materials of all time, golden pheasant tippets. Now if you don't have a whole head, you know, I would recommend getting one. You can get so many cool feathers and tails out of this stuff. Just take one, you'll take the size feather that's gonna give you the two bars about the length you want. So I like that right there. And how I do this, I grab it by the tips and then reach in here and snip it. Oh, about eight or 10 of them. Right there, now you can pull the bulk of the feather out and your tips should still be aligned. So take a look at them, measure your length. I think that's about what we want right there. So switch back and then a couple of wraps right here. We'll take a look at it. Is that what I want? That is exactly what I want. That is one good looking tail. So, okay, catch it in, oh, as far back as you want your body, then bury the rest right there. Now I'm gonna take my thread back just a little bit in front of that tail, put some wax on it. Now the recipe calls for a light green dubbing. And I'm gonna use, um, it is a dry fly, so I'm gonna use a synthetic. And this is a, a hairline microfine. This is actually kind of a lime green, but I think it looks, you know, looks better than a light olive would. I want it to be a little bit bright. So I'm gonna catch this in, maybe a, a three inch noodle here. We'll see. So we're gonna dub, I would say, two thirds, two thirds of the body. We, we do have two components up front. Now you see, I've got a little bit of thread before I catch that dubbing on, and I left it like that so that I could, my first couple of wraps will get me right back there 
to where I'm going to catch it in. And as soon as I catch some, some of that dubbing on the hook, I can spin this, pull it a little bit tighter if I want to clean up this noodle a little bit. And I think I've probably got enough to get me up here to where I want to get. That one is coming off just a little bit. Pull it a little tighter there. Okay, I think that body is going to be fine, and it is certainly a lime green. Now the next component we're going to tie in is a medium-sized chunk of white calf tail. So I think that, yeah, that's about how much I want right there. And almost to the length of the tail, maybe just a little bit short of it. And if you have any, this stuff does not really stack, but if you have any really long, crazy ones, just pull them out with your fingers. So let's measure our length right there, and then swap our hands, get rid of that under fur, and just do a pinch wrap right here, and then two, and then, okay, let's see what we have. I don't do the trick like with this, like I do with a bucktail, where I'll put a wrap just around the bundle of hair. Uh, you don't usually need to, so I'm gonna just take some medium wraps and then get tighter and tighter as I go back right here. Just make sure it doesn't really spin around on you. And that's not, that's staying on top of the hook. I've got enough wraps that I think I can get in here and snip this without it spinning around the hook on me. Okay, now we got a little bit of a, a bump right here, so let's just try to smooth this out. Get us a little bit of a taper. It will make wrapping this hackle much easier. Okay, for the hackle, take a, a brown dry fly hackle or a grizzly or, you know, better yet, a grizzly dyed brown. And just, I, I grabbed a, a feather that I thought was going to be about the right, right length. So I'm just going to pull it around until I find a spot that's about one and a half times the hook gap which is right there, and that's gonna be my tie-in point. Now one trick right here, before you catch it in, you might want to, the side of the feather that's gonna be closest to the hook, strip off a few extra fibers right there. So you see that? The side that's closest to the camera there, I've pulled about eight or 10 fibers, more of the fibers off, and that will just help you get that first wrap laying down smoothly, and that should, get you a better laying hackle. So I've left quite a bit of room here because I want to put uh, really as many wraps as I can fit on it right here on this size hackle. Um, I want a big pretty bushy fly here so I'm going to wrap these around. I'm not using hackle pliers but this is a long enough feather that I think I can do it pretty well with just my fingers. So I'm not even counting but I'm going to get I don't know, eight wraps or so right there. Okay, now we've got enough room for our head and whip finish. Let's catch this one off with two wraps right here. Now I'll show you what I do here. A lot of folks probably don't, but before I snip off this ex excess feather right here, I will just pull everything back and now work on my head. So just try to get all these fibers back right here and then I can build my head hopefully without any crazy fibers going forward. So now I should have room for a wet finish right there without trapping any of these fibers. Let's see if we can pull it off. Not always easy. You can just kind of zigzag it through there a little bit. Okay, I think we made it. I didn't trap any going forward. So I'm gonna just slide my scissors in right there, poke them, and we do have this excess feather right here to snip off. And for the most part, we've got a pretty clean head. Most of those fibers are coming off perpendicular, and we've got enough room for the smallest drop of head cement right there. And there you have it, a light green trude. Pretty cool looking pattern. I can't wait to get out on the water and fish this thing come this spring. So that's it everybody, I appreciate y'all watching. Take care and we'll see you next time.